Today's video, I think, is going to be about contrast. We've covered before this issue with the U.S. dollar being the world reserve currency, which gives the U.S. the ability to basically print money infinitely because everybody in the world is forced to, by law, buy it to buy oil. Well, the Marshall Islands isn't a big place. It's only about 53,000 people, but they have created as their national currency a cryptocurrency. Now, this isn't going to change anything in the world, but I do, th at least not at the moment, but I do think it's going to signal, it's going to be seen as the first in a wave of countries doing this. The Marshall Islands made its own cryptocurrency doing away with the U.S. dollar. The government has signed the change into law, making the sovereign its new official cryptocurrency, as spotted by CNBC. Africa cryptocurrency trader host Rand Nooner on Twitter yesterday. Now, this was back in May. I missed this. I, uh, I don't know how I did, but I did. The bill was signed into effect on March 1st, but the news is making waves again this week. The Marshall Islands population 53,000. So the change doesn't affect many, but it's significant for citizens of the island because banks and credit card companies will need to begin accepting it. With the recent change, U.S. dollars are still likely to be accepted on the Marshall Islands. The sovereign will just be considered the nation's official legal tender. Now, down here, it says something that I think is very prescient in this. The Marshall Islands, a U.N. member and a sovereign state creating a larger impact for blanks <laughs> for banks globally. Back in February, Venezuela launched its own oil-backed crypto called the Petro. But it hasn't completely removed its own currency and Venezuela, blah, 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 blah. But the point is, they use this word, sovereign. And I'll give you a little bit of inside baseball to those of you who are not um, YouTubers. The word sovereign will get your video demonetized if you put it in the description or in the title, which is very odd. Just the word sovereign. It may have something to do with the sovereign citizens movement, you know, and the things that they've done. I don't know, but it's very strange. There are certain words that if, you, if they appear in your video, in the description, anywhere, it will get you clear, flagged. And sovereign is one of them. Now... When you think of that in contrast to this story, China to unleash 700 billion won in reserve, reserves cut for some banks. What this means is when we were talking about fractional reserve banking, basically China has taken the deposit requirement out of the banks, just like the U.S. did many years ago. Meaning that if you go put $1,000 in the bank, they only have to keep 100 of it ready for you at any one time. They can take the other 900 and lend it out and create basically fake money. And then if somebody continues to do that over and over and over again, we'll play this video. It's not a very long video. It's only one minute long, but it explains it perfectly. To create money through a system called fractional reserve banking. Whenever you deposit money, the bank is legally required to keep a certain percentage of it somewhere safe, but can lend everything else. Here's an example based on a 10% reserve requirement. John goes to his bank and deposits $1,000. John's bank keeps $100 and lends the remaining $900 to Mike. There is now $1,900 in the financial system, John's $1,000 deposit, and Mike's $900 loan. Next, Mike uses the $900 to buy a laptop from Karen. Then Karen deposits her $900 at another bank. The bank keeps 10% and lends the remaining $810 to George. There is now $2,710 in the system. John's $1,000 deposit, Karen's $900 deposit, and George's $810 loan. This goes on and on until John's initial $1,000 is turned into approximately $10,000. Believe it or not, commercial banks actually create more money than central banks. Banks? So, believe it or not, that is absolutely how the banking system works, and now the Chinese have gotten on board with this. And, you know, you can make any kind of allegation about who's going to win what trade war with whom, 
But when you have a country like this who has a middle class that is more populous than our entire country, every man, woman, and child, and you could probably add dogs and cats, do that? I, I do. You know, it seems like, you know, the way the world is going and how it relates to cryptocurrency is that you have one currency that literally cannot be fiated, so to speak, because of the way that it exists. And the Marshall Islands, wanting to remain sovereign, wanting to remain in charge of its own world, going to cryptocurrencies. And you see China now going literally the exact opposite direction, creating fake make-believe money of their own. It says here, China's central bank will cut the amount of cash some lenders must hold as reserves, unlocking about 700 billion won, 108 billion U.S. dollar of liquidity as it seeks to control leverage and support smaller companies. So this is exactly what they're doing. That loan they were talking about in the cartoon, that's what they're talking about. But this number, which is, you know, a huge amount of money by any standard for any country that they're going to be able to pour into their economy. And as they st as their economy grows, their economy, their currency strengthens, which good for them, not great for their exports, because it makes their exports more expensive on top of the tariffs. And then with U.S. businesses getting tariffed over there, you see the problem. They have more people in their middle class as customers than we have total people in the world. Well, not in the world, but in the United States, you know what I mean. Our middle class versus their middle class, our consumer class versus their consumer class, it's not even close. And then actually, believe it or not, Africa. Now, strangely enough, this is something I didn't even know. 70%, 70% of Latin Americans do not have a bank account. And so they are switching to phone-based banking, basically, which is just kind of a cousin of cryptocurrencies. And so this is another huge market that the U.S. basically has just decided they don't want to have. And I don't know how you take anything else away from the attitude that we've seen come out of our administration about Latin America. I don't know how anyone could think that that attitude about these people is anything other than just a sign to say, take your money elsewhere. We don't like you. We don't want you. We don't want your money. 700 million people are now going to have a place to go where the goods down there from China are going to be incredibly more affordable than they will be here. So with them going into cryptocurrencies and not putting their countries at risk, at least not the pro-U.S. ones anyway, or excuse me, not the, the ones that are pro-U.S. or the ones that are putting their currencies at risk by following our example. And when the U.S. says stuff like this, that cryptocurrency, quote-unquote, is one of the greatest emerging threats to national security, basically what they're saying is your privacy, your right to privacy is a national security threat. Your use of cash, your use of cryptocurrency, your use of uh, exchange mediums that they can't track and they can't verify for themselves, that you are now a threat to national security. So you're going to be put in the same boat as Mr. Maduro and Venezuela and places like the Marshall Islands and any country that wants to be its own thing is going to be a, seen as a threat to national security. And this is right from the uh, Secret Service. Some members of Congress, like Representative Robert Pittinger of North Carolina, are already on board with increasing government regulation in regards to privacy coins. And, of course, they talk about, you know, billions stolen and uh, hacks, and they talk about drugs and all this, but they don't talk about the billions and billions of dollars the U.S. has seized unilaterally from people around the world that they see as, quote-unquote, threats to national security, like Diaz de Cabello and Tarek al If Those guys are bad dudes, don't get me wrong, but those guys never got a day in court. 
they had assets here in the United States that they had purchased with U.S. currency, perfectly legal, and the government just seized it, seized it, said, you know what, you don't have that anymore, it's now ours. And believe me, I know Diosado Cabello is not a good guy, but they went after his daughter, who was actually a really great singer. She tried to come into the U.S. and she was deported for no reason. So, but this is what's going on. There's, there's this uh, schism happening where there's two, going to be two uh, schools of thought about finance. And I'm not sure the U.S. is going to be on the right side of it. I am really not sure because the way things seem to be going now, it seems like we're headed for a day when anyone attempting to get out of the U.S. financial system will be seen as a criminal. So we'll leave it there. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.